In this video, we're going to be discussing whether a diesel engine would survive an electromagnetic pulse. Hey guys, this is Josh with the Depth Tape Channel. And in this video, we're going to be asking the question, are diesel engines EMP proof? And I'm gonna answer the question right away. Yes, some diesel engines are EMP proof, but many diesel engines are not. And to understand why some are and some are not, you need to understand what an EMP is, how it damages things, and then understand the different types of diesel engines out there in order to see how it would affect them differently. So the first thing we need to do is ask ourselves what an EMP is and how does it damage things. Okay, so what is an EMP? Well, an EMP is an electromagnetic pulse. It is a large pulse or field of magnetism. And what it mostly does is fries electronics. Now, how do these, how are these created? Well, generally they would be created one by a thermonuclear explosion. <laughs> this was a secondary effect of the explosion itself and it'll damage electronics. But there are specific weapons that are produced by private corporations and the military that actually just produce EMPs without a thermonuclear explosion. And these, of course, don't have the explosion, but still damage the electronics. But how do they damage the electronics? Does the magnetism itself damage the electronics? Mm, not really. You see, magnetism is one of two ways to get electricity. You see, basically two ways to get electricity. You can have chemical-based electricity, like in a battery, which produces DC current. But most electricity is produced by alternating current, which is fields of magnetism that are induced into wires, which produces voltage. And that's how you get electricity, lights, cameras, whatever. So this gets to the basis of how an EMP damages electronics. You see, electronics are very, very sensitive to voltage spikes and current spikes. And if you were to, let's say, give them a whole much more voltage than they need or are used to, they'll fry because they have very little conductors, they're very close together and very sensitive components. So the magnetic pulse itself creates a huge magnetic field which induces voltage inside circuit boards and wires connected to computers, phones, GPS systems, basically anything electronic. And what it does is it creates a lot more voltage than these systems can handle, handle and they short out internally, pretty much non-repairable. Of course, the length that they're exposed to it, if they're shielded or not, how big the EMP is as far as the amount of magnetism, all depends on how damaged they are, of course. So we've answered the question what an EMP is and how it damages things. Now we need to get over to the diesel engine side and discuss which diesel engines would be affected. Diesel engines, predominantly without electronics, are the ones that are not going to be affected. Mostly older diesel engines because pretty much early 90s to mid 1990s and before, almost all diesel engines were non-electronic. They were what they call mechanical diesel engines, meaning the fuel system was not controlled by any sort of electronics or computer for the most part. Of course, they would have an electric starter, most of them, although some actually had air starters. They would still need an alternator to charge the batteries on the vehicle. And many of them had what they called a fuel shutoff solenoid, but those are very basic electrical components. However, starting in the mid to late 90s, almost all manufacturers, due to emissions regulations and wanting to be more efficient, started transitioning into electronically based fuel systems. Now, which type of fuel systems would they be? Well, pretty much all the ones produced current day. We have electronic unit injectors, Huey fuel systems, common rail fuel systems. All of these are going to be controlled by a computer module, which of course has a circuit board. Now we already discussed that circuit boards are what really gets damaged the most by an EMP. So if you have a newer diesel, we'll say any, basically any of them made in the last 25 years, an EMP is probably gonna fry your computer and then your engine is not gonna start. And there's really 
no way around this. If you have a con computer controlled fuel system, it's gonna damage the computer and your engine's not gonna start. That being said, is there a way to shield it? Could you say there's something called a Faraday cage? Could you put your engine computer inside of that? You could, however, remember that the engine computer, ECM, is connected to all of the wiring going to the engine and to the truck or piece of equipment. So even if you were to shield the computer itself, the wiring itself that connects to the computer would also be induced voltage and it could still fry the circuit board. There's not a easy way to protect your engine from an EMP on an electronic engine. So you have basically two options, buy a much older engine, or what you could do is, and this is very expensive, have a spare electronic control module, an engine computer that you would keep inside of a building that's inside of a Faraday cage or some sort of shielding that would keep it from an EMP. And you should be good to go, maybe. Now, if you heard the maybe there, you're probably wondering, are you serious? Isn't there a way to just have a spare computer and just put it on there? Well, you could. However, there's still circuit boards and modules on your piece of equipment or your truck, most likely. I don't know what that means. And what do I mean? So let's say you replace that module. Well, you have electronic injectors, but they're mostly just solenoids. So they may or may not be affected by an EMP. My guess would be they're probably not gonna be affected because injectors generally don't fire at low voltage. They're around 100 volts depending on the manufacturer. The big problem is there are more than one module, especially on newer equipment and trucks, not just the engine module. There's several sensors by themselves on the engine that have modules. Most of the emission systems has its own module. Some of the sensors like SCR sensors, DPF sensors, they have modules themselves. The truck itself, if it has an automatic transmission, is going to have another module. It can have cab control module, ABS brake control module, body control module, chassis control module. There are lots and lots and lots of computers the newer equipment and trucks get. So, unless you want to have tens of thousands of dollars of extra components shielded somewhere, a newer vehicle is basically going to be completely useless if an EMP occurs. Well, that basically answers the question. Thanks for watching the video. How about a little destruction of the week? This week's destruction of the week, we have a subscriber submitted from Kenyon and we have a really big failure here. We've got a 793 haul truck, 3516 cat, diesel engine 25 ton crane looks like that we're big time here folks so what happened well looks like it threw two connecting rods and this is a v formation engine so the connecting rods are next to each other you can see the piston there's stuck still stuck in the broken liner on the right it is missing on the left or you can see the valves in the head yeah blew out the oil pan cracked the engine block crankshafts damage this has got to be by far the most expensive destruction of the week. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.